many robot builders and everybody else who just happens to have stumbled into this video. So today what we're going to talk about is kind of what actually makes a robot. And there's actually three things that make a robot. They've got controller, sensor, effectors. For example, this is a robot, fictional though he may be. He can see the world, he can think about the world, and he can act on the world. And that's what makes him a real robot. Whereas these things very often are not actually really robots. I know everybody thinks that they're robots. They're really not. They're getting a little bit smarter. But industrial robots are not generally robots because they don't really interact with the world. They're dumb machines doing the same thing over and over and over again. So they're basically like clockwork. So now, let's break down these three things that actually make a robot. So if you're looking at the little bot here right now, there's, you can see that he has all three of those things. He has an end effector, which is something that allows you to act on the world. He has sensors and he has a brain. So let's break down each one of those things. The effector is something that allows the robot to interact with the world. It could be something as simple as a little gripper here in the case of the little bot. It could be something like a jousting rig that allows the robot to poke on people. It could be legs, little legs that allow him to move inside of the world. It could be the wheels of a robot so he can swim through the water or just the arm itself. An arm is an effector with an end effector on the end right there, see? So the end effectors are things that allow the robot to interact with the world. Wheels, grippers, anything that touches stuff. So now let's talk about sensors. Sensors are the things that allow the robot to see the world. In the case of the little bot here, we've got two little eyes right here. This is technically a proximity sensor. It's not actually an eye like the human eye. It's very different from that. The proximity sensor lets him see how far away he is from stuff. All of the sensors are out there to help the robot understand where he is and where stuff is relative to him. That's the whole point of sensors, just to give you information about the world in some kind of context. And now the last thing is controllers, which is actually the brain of the robot. For humans, our controller is this thing inside of our head. It is the thing that takes all of the information from the sensors and then transfers it to the effectors so the effectors can do something in the world. It's the decision maker. When we create a robot, we are trying to create what we are. We are a thing that can see the world, think about the world, make a decision, and then do something to the world. We can dig a hole, pick up your cup of coffee, play with your toy, whatever it happens to be. There are very many different types of brands that robots can use. There's the very simple basic ones, which could almost be as simple as a switch. If a switch hits something, the robot can decide to run away from it. That's really common. But then you can make that a little bit more complex, and you can use the proximity sensors and a microcontroller like an Arduino. Actually, you can find Arduinos on the LittleBot's website. All these resources are there and available. But the Arduino is what's called a microcontroller. And a microcontroller is a very simple processing unit that allows you to take in basic information from sensors and make basic decisions and calculations that you can then send to end effectors. But then, you've also got the more advanced stuff. You've got the, the computers, the full processing stuff that you see inside of self-driving cars and real robots like, like this guy right here. But the more advanced computers are able to do millions and billions of calculations every second to allow the robot to analyze those photos coming in from cameras and all these different sensors and analyze what's going on around them. That's the point of those computers. They're able to do thousands of calculations. Little known fact, you don't actually have to use normal computers like everybody thinks of with the standard bytes and the digital stuff. There are actually biological computers that people are using to control robots. Seriously, they used a rat brain to control a robot. Look at this. But ultimately, that's what it is. When you're making a robot, in order for it to be a legitimate, true robot, and not just an automation of some kind, it has to be able to see the world with sensors, it has to be able to act on the world through the end effectors, and it has to make decisions about how all those things interact inside of some kind of controller, basically the brain of the robot. So hopefully this was helpful to you. If you want to look, check out more videos about what we're doing at LittleBots and new projects that are coming up, go ahead and check over there on the side. And be sure to subscribe down below so you can get all the videos that we're going to be making in the future.